Hey there! Uh, something frustrating happened this week with uh, another podcast. One of the cameras decided to stay out of focus for 40 out of the 90 minutes of this week's podcast. So you're going to see Donnie doing his normal Donnie things, but he's not going to be in focus. And we're uh, a small team, and by small team, I mean I do all of the post-production uh, and, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. So, he's going to be out of focus for most of the episode. I'm sorry in advance, but technology sometimes thinks that, uh, they'd rather see, that we'd rather see the wall in focus rather than the person, even though autofocus is on, and I, I don't know. Anyways, Here's the episode. Enjoy it. No shorts going to be made from it because Donnie's out of focus and it's frustrating and I don't want to look at it. Uh, also, if you're watching this podcast weekly, every single week, or even just right now, please let me know you exist. Put a comment in the comment section. Like this video. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that yet. And enjoy the podcast. Uh, it just, you know, helps me. And Donnie, stay motivated knowing there's people out there. Uh, we are on week 22. We are the most consistent unwatched podcast of all time, approaching all time. So um, knowing you're out there is just, you know, a little motivating. So please leave a comment. And sorry about Donnie being out of focus, but that's what's happening. It's already happened. You're not reshooting it. Thank you. Did you watch last week's episode? Uh, I did. You did? What did you think? Well, I liked it. I liked it, too. I mean, as, as much as I love listening to myself talk. <laughs> I love that. I have now figured out how to do all the post-production, or actually give all the post-production to robots. Oh, so you give it to the robots? Yeah. <laughs> I mean... No. No wonder AI is going to try to kill us. <laughs> no. <laughs> no wonder. The robots are like, we are very tired of this. <laughs> oh, my God. We are the husband. <laughs> we are the husband. Oh, my God. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Again, I picked out some great hot takes. Oh, my because God. Because this worked out great the, last week. The robots did that. That'd be crazy. They were you talking like Uncle Frank. <laughs> <laughs> we are the husbands now. Yeah, husbands now. All right. Being Instagram famous is better than being TikTok famous. Uh, well, I happen to think that TikTok is communist propaganda. All of it? From the Chinese. All of it? They're trying to make our people stupid. Look at what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> you consume a lot of TikTok? No, but I just feel like if I did, I'd be even dumber. I tried to... Uh, I feel like we are only one, just a few brain cells away from like Harry and loading it on a little motorcycle all the way to Colorado. <laughs> yeah, may, pro, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Whenever TikTok first started, I tried to avoid it yeah. for a very long time, which I did. Mm. I did. I'll tell you, I, ha I have a TikTok. It has like two posts on it. Yeah. Um, I get a lot of TikTok incomings from friends. It's like, you got to see this. And I, I check them once a month. So it's just a pile of TikToks. And so your phone, or even your brain isn't like autopilot TikTok. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. In fact, my, my roommate woke up today and he's like, Donovan, hey, wake up. Facebook and Instagram are out. And I'm like, good. Hooray. Yes. <laughs> Maybe we'll just chill out for a day. He's like, I know, I hate it. I'm like, what, you hate it? You can't just do anything else? <laughs> and so like, there's a little bit of a... Uh, I'm already, I'm 35, but I'm getting to this spot where I'm like, kids these days. And I literally, I am in such hate with the internet. Why? Because I don't think the internet has added very much to my life. I love YouTube. Like, yeah. I love the idea of, like, long-form content where we talk things out, like complex ideas. I love the idea of podcasts. Those are really cool. Mm -hmm. Maybe that added something to my life. But this short-form content uh, is so... Um, uh, to me, very unuseful to society at all as a whole. Because, like, if you can if you condense an idea without any nuance into its a hot take, mm -hmm. essentially, right here. Yep, that's not very useful for anybody. But if you have a long 
you know, a, a, a long, let's turn, let's, let's turn these off. Yep. Turn off the communicator, Spock. Um, the attached from the world. Yes, I, uh, I, I do think that there's just um, a goodness in getting away from the short form content and, and slowing down. Um, I'm only really good at like two things anyways. I'm super good at playing bass guitar. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty good at like building with legos <laughs> you know what i mean like like yeah. you know like <laughs> yeah yeah you that, were good at building that, with legos. that, that kind of like translates to you know the wood shop out right out back like i'm good at that kind of stuff and i'm good at playing playing music and so because those are the two things i'm really good at i don't have much love for no i mean like i don't have much more to contribute to the the global conversation right right everything that i say on this podcast is something that i've been listening to mm -hmm. that i ingested and said well that rings true to me and then i come here and i talk about it on this yeah but I'm, my, my true expertise only really lies in music in like yeah in like Legos. yeah like or like the the expression of artistic you know ideas like i'm good at those things and I, i'm like an expert at that but anything else we're just what do you think about this idea? Right. And so because of that, we know we're doing this and we're having these conversations and they're so fun to have. Um, I do think there's a, I think there's a waning to, to the idea of being canceled. I think that's kind of going down because I think people are starting to understand, hey. You mean like the fear or the, the likelihood of being canceled has gone way yeah. down? Because if you get canceled, you're only canceled by the people that canceled you. Yeah. You're not canceled by everyone. No. And so the it used to be like when you're canceled, everyone cancels you, but that never happened. Like otherwise, Rogan would have been canceled a zillion times mm -hmm. or whatever. But you said better Instagram or TikTok. Uh, neither, uh, both of them seem like kind of dumb things to be famous on because monetizing both of those things are really difficult. Uh, monetizing Instagram is really difficult. Uh, I think most people make money on there just from like having an audience and then selling them a product of some kind. Oh yeah, so you do a I, sponsored ad. Yeah, I, I, well, that's I've, why today is brought to you by Quick Trip uh, Original Blend <laughs> Coffee. Uh, they paid me. They didn't pay me anything. They didn't want to talk about. It. They're not our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a sponsor. We only have forty views Quick a week. The go, the. Uh, CEO of Quick Trip endorsed uh, everything Uncle Frank says. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if we're the longest running podcast that only gets around 40 to 50 views a week. Because <laughs> we're on episode 22. How awesome would it be to, to have like, hunt, like tens of thousands of episodes? Like for every week of our lives from now until we're dead, yep. we never stop and it's always just the same 50 people. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> the same 50 people are like, I got to see what these guys are up to today. <laughs> Log in, listen. <laughs> Log in. Yeah, I mean, we will probably be at a, episode 100 and we'll be like, still getting 50 views, <laughs> <laughs> but we're here. No, and we gotta get uh, Those are rookie numbers, man. We gotta pump up those numbers. It's gotta be like, pump up those numbers. 10,000. 10,000 um, episodes, and then we're <laughs> hey guys, we know all their names. Yeah, we'd like to say thank you to Jeff, Steve, Frank, Bob, <laughs> Zach, Nathan, <laughs> Justin, Mom. We, we memorized all of them. <laughs> mom, other mom, <laughs> um, not you, dad. You don't ever listen. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I watched a video this week about yeah. a mom yeah. who was, uh, whose son identifies as a cat. So oh, that's going to be useful later in his life. So, so whenever he wasn't feeling very good, he, she took him to the vet. And what happened? Because he identifies as a cat. Yeah. And what happened? The vet wouldn't take him. He said, because he has a human anatomy. I actually legally can't operate on him at all. <laughs> and she was like, and she was like, that was a, what's the word where you like, Oh my God, God. I can't believe my brain's not working. Uh, where, it's, where it's like, uh, Oh God, what's that word where? Okay. Well, there's uh, a, no, at, 
I'm We're, going through the whole dictionary here. No, 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 no <laughs> stop it. Oh, God, my brain. What is... Uh, Abs. That's a. That was a form of... Dero- it's like... Uh, what are they? Derogatory towards him? What's the word I'm looking for? They were being bad to this kid because he pretends that he's a cat all day. Oh, my God. You know, I, I'm kind of pro-bullying. You're pro-bullying? I think so. <laughs> because of situations like this. Yeah. Anyways, it was, like if I was pretending to be a cat and then you came by and you're like, hey, pussy. And then you started pushing me around and being like, if you didn't act like a cat so much, I wouldn't be beating you up right now. I'd be like, wait, oh, wow, I shouldn't act like a cat. I should act like a human. <laughs> Anyways, the insanity there was just. I'm not pro bullying. You shouldn't be mean to the no, kids don't that are be pretending mean to, to be cats. But the, but the insanity there was, was just like hard to consume. It's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. <laughs> Your son said he's a cat. Well, first off, I'm assuming he's like four or five. Mm-hmm. He's probably also a fire truck. Yeah. Are you going to take him to the Transformers? clinic? Transformers. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I am a Tomorrow. cat. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to keep. Oh my god! It was I just. I am a big kitty cat. Look at me. I'm pit pooping in the box. Oh, I tell you a story about being a cat. Tell me. One time I was a cat. You were as a kid. Oh, I, was a you identified I identified as a, as a cat for about five minutes of my life. <laughs> okay. Do you want to hear this story? No. This is I a don't. terrible story. I this might be the worst thing I've done, other than encourage an audience of fifty people to bully kids who pretend they're a cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So this is what I did. My friend Jason got a cat. Okay. Okay. The cat. No cats were harmed in this story. So don't worry about that. That's good. Um. But. I, <laughs> This is just after we graduated college. I was in my 20s. We were wild people. There was this place that we called, uh, we named it after our dormitory group. We called it Mog on Memorial. It was a apartment that was very large that had like multiple rooms and a bunch of guys who lived with each other at the university rented this place together. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's so... It was just the bro hole. It was where all the guys the were bro. hanging. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. No, if you didn't, if you weren't doing anything, you didn't know where to go, didn't know what to do. We were at Mog on Memorial. We were hanging out over the bro hole. Okay. And everybody was just sitting there playing League of Legends on their laptops in the in the bro living room, right? Yep. And Jason's room had a bathroom next to it. And I walked in to this place. And the guys were all there, except for Jason. Jason's my best friend at the yep. time, right? Yep. And he just got this cat. Cat's name's Lily. I'm like, hey guys, is Jason here? They're like, no, he's not here yet. He usually comes back at, you know, whatever. And I was like, oh, that's like 20 minutes from now, okay. And, and then I was sitting there on the couch with the guys, and I was like, man, I've got to take a huge dump. <laughs> like, a big one. And I was like, hey, guys, what if I took a dump in that cat box? (laughs) (laughs) And you know how guys are. I shouldn't have done it. But they were all like, yes, (laughs) do it, do it, it, do it, do it. Do it for the pros. Okay. So the peer pressure was there. Every League of Legends guy was like, listen, we're not even going to do another round until you chop one off in the cat box. (laughs) Okay, so I'm like, all right, I'm in. This is going to be the greatest prank of all time. And I do it. And it... <laughs> it was just perfect. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just... Did the cat have a Big, bidet? human-sized yep. uh, boo-boo mm-hmm. right in the cat box. Yep. Okay. And so then I just put the top of the cat box with the little <laughs> door on it. Like back on it. Where is the cat box? Where's in it? Jason's closet. In closet. So you, t- <laughs> yeah. you went into his closet. No, I took it to the bathroom. <laughs> okay. Okay, but then okay. okay, put the put the cat box no. back in. Put the lid I'm back. I'm not an animal. Yeah. <laughs> I do think my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so, put it back on. You can't see it. The cat door and everything. And I put it back in the closet where it was. <laughs> oh my god! And then I just forgot about it. <laughs> was <laughs> not even thinking about it. Go back into the living room. Me and the guys are just clicking <laughs> Lego Legends, you know. And oh my god, Jason gets home and everybody remembers. So Jason gets he gets home and he's like, "Hey guys," just like he always does. Oh hey Jason, how are you? You know, all the guys are looking around like everything's normal here. Everything's- <laughs> 
<laughs> so Jason goes back to his room that's had a human turd in it for like half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, <laughs> nasty. <laughs> right? He's like, it's disgusting in my room. <laughs> and, then, and then we hear him like rumbling around. <laughs> He's like, in a chair. he goes to clean the cat box. <laughs> and we're all sitting there playing League of Legends. And all we hear is this, oh, <laughs> Lily. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Lily! <laughs> he's still playing the cat! He's, he's still he's playing. full on dude turn! <laughs> oh my god! God, it was like the funniest thing! <laughs> oh! Lily! <laughs> he didn't think. I think yeah. this is too big for my cat. No, no. He came back and he's like, which one of you did this? Oh, and nobody okay. fessed up. They were just like, I don't what, what are you talking about? I think Lily did it. <laughs> yeah, Lily, he probably. I don't know. And he cleaned it out. He cleaned Jason, it. you're gonna come out here and blame <laughs> and us. us. You're the one who got the for your cat's poop. Dude, he cleaned it up by himself, and then I came clean about it like a, two or three years later. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, Jason, I just wanna let you know that was my man turd in the cat box. <laughs> what did he do? What did he say? Uh, he's like, I knew it. I knew it was you. I looked at, I looked at that turn. Like, Donnie. That's <laughs> like one of the uh, craziest things I think I've ever done. It was so funny, though. Oh, man. Bro. <laughs> Lily. Oh, Lily. That's, that's disgusting. Oh, it was nasty. I, I'd do it twice. I'd do it again. I'd do it again. For the memory, for the laughs. Oh, man, we never stopped laughing about that. It was so funny. So yeah, that's a, uh, that was a thing. And that's why I won't be an Instagram famous person. I'll only be a TikTok famous. Because Lily. you can't be Instagram famous when you're pooping in kitty litter. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it was, it was a demeaning experience. <laughs> Can you imagine? I had to like... <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it didn't play out how I originally managed. Do you remember like the squatty it. potty situation? Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. that, it was perfect for that. Like, if, you know, you could, humans could just have cat boxes. <laughs> they could. If, they, if you're really into the squat situation, it would uh, be good good for that. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but also, th there'd be a lot more just poop just laying around. No, we were just scooping it out and throw it in the trash. Hmm. And that wouldn't be filthy. Why do people put up with cats, man? Because I great. love cats. Like, I'm a cat person. But They're great. They take, they're like so uh, self sufficient. Except for, except for, except for they, oh, Lily, you every actually, day. Actually, if you have an outdoor cat, you don't even really have to mess with the kitty. Okay, outdoor cat is, is, is actually a big what I brain have. move. So uh, when we first got our cat, we didn't want him to be an outdoor cat because they tend to have a, a shorter lifespan. Yeah. Um, but he kept meowing at the door. Yeah. And wasn't happy just being inside all the time. So we, we let him be an outdoor cat, and he does a great job. We can go outside and go, Leo! And he'll just come, <laughs> come running back. And uh, his k kitty litter is never full, because he just does it outside. So it's great. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> Next one. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. I had a cat question for you. Okay, tell me, ask oh, me your cat question. Jeez, it was such a good question. Oh. Was it about outdoor cat, indoor cat, kitty oh, litter? Oh, claws, declaws. What do you think about declawing a cat? I think it's fine. If you do it at the right time. If you do it at the right time, why is that? Uh, because they're not attached to the... It, so the people say that cat's claws are kind of like their fingers, yeah. you know? Yeah. So if you declaw them after they've grown up to be an adult and then all of a sudden they lose their fingers, sometimes it affects their, their mentality because they're like, oh, my fingers oh, are gone. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that would, that's exactly what would happen to me. Yeah. So, but if you do it when they're a cat, they don't know any different. When they're and, a baby. And they don't care and your furniture doesn't get tore up. So mm. I think it's fine. I mean, a lot of people would disagree with that. It's a hot take. Yeah, it's, loads, it's, it's, it's loads controversial. of people disagree with that. Yeah. Including the woman in my life. She would vehemently be like, no, it exposes their nerve endings, and then they forever. It's like, I don't know. I mean, I've had a, a declawed cat and a, and a not declawed cat, or cat, and they were 
Both happy cats. So. I wonder if you can still do it. If it was so bad, they wouldn't let you do it, right? <clears throat> right. Like, like, if it was so bad, they wouldn't, you know, like, let you abort a baby or whatever. You can do that all, all day, so it's no big deal. Yeah, uh, I think it's fine, but... <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah. Uh, if you can kill it, I can abandon it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Who said that? Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle, that's what it was. <laughs> if you can kill it, I can abandon it. All right, uh, <clears throat> we'll move on. Living a hundred years in the future would be better than living a hundred years in the past. The way, where we're headed? Uh, uh, okay, clearly the future. Okay, clearly the future. A hundred years ago, there was like way more disease. A hundred years ago, what is it? Uh, in 1920? Mm -hmm. This is World War I. Yeah. Are we, like, let's be completely serious. A hundred years ago was hell. Probably. World War One in Europe, yeah. the complete meat grinder. We we had half of the medical advancements we had now. We were still chopping limbs off for no. You know what I mean? Like, right. like there was all kinds of stuff. We still have to chop limbs off. Yeah, back then it was like, oh, he's coughing. Let's cut off his arm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you're coughing. We have to cut your mouth off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have lungs anymore. <laughs> so, um, hundred. Let's not be ridiculous. A hundred years ago sucks. Yep. In every way. Um, full on. Okay, so 100 years in the future, um, assuming that we don't kill ourselves with some sort of terrible technology, um, that we don't get into it with Russia or whatever, and uh, annihilate the planet. We don't fight China for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, Think of 100, 100 years in the future, robots would be doing most of the fighting. Yeah, but okay, a hundred years ago, what did we think was going to happen? We thought flying cars, we thought Jetsons, we thought whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or even in the fifties, what we projected into the future was completely wrong. We had mm -hmm. no idea. They couldn't have seen it coming. They didn't know anything about what was going on. Um, I imagine power will be more centralized um, in one way or another, unless some sort of revolution takes place. Um, it's a miracle that we've reached some semblance of equilibrium post World War II. So I don't know, man. Uh, but I'd take my chances on in the future. 100 years in the future, yeah. I think yeah. if there was a time in the past that I'd want to go to, it'd be like the 60s or 70s. I actually think, yes, that would be cool. But or also. The, or the 50s, like right after World War II. Right after World War II? Yeah, well, clearly it would be terrible if you were like a black guy in the 50s. You'd hate yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's just it's just like that whole music vibe, like that mm. that era of music and then just I don't know the the movies and that was magic. Shows that yeah. I saw that are depicted in that time, everything just looks so awesome. And back then everybody was more engaged with each other because we didn't have cell phones. And for entertainment you had to have conversations or go somewhere or mm -hmm. hang out with your family. Now it's like I feel like the 80s was the sweet spot for that. Uh even the 90s was good for that. Uh Yeah, we lived through we we, we lived kind of last last chance at at no screens. Yeah. Uh, childhoods. It's crazy to think of now that like some of the movies that we grew up on uh -huh. in the 90s uh -huh. are now like 30 or 40 years old. Yes, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles. That's like ancient yeah. knowledge. Yeah. That is the old wisdom. And, and like, like I wonder how old Tombstone is now. It's got to be like 30 years old and that was like one of the, the my, one of my favorite movies growing up on. Uh, Young Guns. When was Tombstone released? We're going to find out. Young Jamie. Look that up. <laughs> Young Jamie. Tombstone was released. Robot Jamie. Uh, Joe, to Tombstone was released in December 25th, 1993. 1993. 1993. So, yeah. Thank it's, you, it's Young Jamie. 30 years. Yeah. 30 and a few. Mm hmm. That is crazy. Yep. That's crazy. 93. And it is 2023. 2024. Oh, God. Yep. Oh, God. Yep. So I've been signing all my documents wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Men should not wear skinny jeans. Is that what those are? Mm-hmm. Are you wearing skinny jeans right mm -hmm. now? <laughs> are they really? Well, I mean, that's what they said on the store. Oh, I mean, that's the skinny jeans have gotten more... Uh, not so skinny? Not so skinny. Mm. Back, I'll tell you what skinny jeans really were. I remember back in my day, back in 2008. You remember those days, the eyeliner days? Yeah. 
the uh, the wear your sister's jeans days, those were skinny jeans, kids. You don't know what skinny jeans are about. Skinny jeans. Do you <laughs> or whenever you broke into your sister's closet. Do you remember going to the thrift store and finding a pair of pants that you thought looked really cool? Yeah. But they had the zipper on the side. Oh my God, I remember those days. <laughs> I do. Yeah, you're like, how gay am I? That was like, how gay am I willing to be to be cool, yet I still have to see my dad. <laughs> That was like that was the that was the split. Like all the band kids, they love this stuff, and I'm a band kid. And for you know, it was for me. It was really odd because to me, at the time, I was very confused. Yep. Uh, Queer Eye had just came out. Um, this idea of metrosexual was mm -hmm. like floating around. That was a word that floated around, which just meant like really sharp dressed, clean, straight man, but yep. kind of like it's a little femme. Mm hmm And that was supposed to be really sexy back then. Androgyny was big. I remember Brandon Flowers was wearing makeup. The guy from Fall Out Boy, uh, Franz Ferdinand. There was all this like androgyny, and it was kind of cool, like David Bowie cool. And so the girls I liked liked that kind of music. But as soon as I started dressing that way, they were like, "Wow, Donnie's gay." <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Hey, no, 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 no! I was doing this to be straight." <laughs> I was being straight. gay for straight <laughs> for straight because I, I like girls. <laughs> uh, it was really bad. Um, I remember I was working at a grocery store at the time. I was sixteen. I was sacking some groceries. There's this girl I had this crush on. She was a cashier. Boop 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 boop. And uh, I finally worked up the nerve to like try to hit on her a little bit. And then you know I'm sixteen. She's sixteen, whatever. And I go up to her and she, I'm like, hey. How you doing today? I think her name was Mackenzie. How you doing, Mackenzie? And she's like, good. And then I'm like, just, you know, seeing what's up, talking to her about her life. And she's like, I thought you were gay. <laughs> no, no. I was like, no. That's metrosexual. No, look at me. I'm doing all the stuff to be straight. <laughs> and I remember going to a party uh, with eyeliner on. And then some, this girl I likes dad was like, are you gay, son? He said that to <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thought you were gay. <laughs> no. I was like, wow, well, ah, this isn't working. <laughs> this isn't working. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> I was very confused in 2008. This is a very hard time for me. 2007, 2008 was really working. rough. <laughs> it's actually uh, what's it, deflecting the ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turns out girls like it when you act like you're a manly man <laughs> for some reason. You have since the beginning of time. I remember Jenko's. Oh, I like those, but I also couldn't afford them. Uh, and they were also, not only could were they really expensive, but they were also hard to find. Oh, Okay, did you ever have, I had the off-brand version of Jinkos. They were huge jeans that went over your entire shoe. Yeah. Did you ever be riding your bike in your Jinkos and get them stuck in the chain and yeah. bust ass? Yeah, yes. that, that, that happened to me. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> whenever Jinkos was a thing, I was only able to locate one pair of Jinkos. Yeah, because the they were always sold out. And the only pair I could find was like a little bit too small for me. But I still bought them. Yeah. I still forced myself into them. Yeah. And then I saw a picture of myself wearing them recently. Yeah. And I thought to myself, man, those looks really stupid. <laughs> Why did I like those pants? very unfunctional jeans? <laughs> those look so uh, dumb. Why was I into it? Well, you know, it's like it's funny to me because Jinkos, yeah, they're not they're not they're not ergonomic in any way. Mm -hmm. Like they don't help you do anything. They're just nope. big giant pants. But these girls these days, they're wearing almost Jinkos. Oh really? You know, the big giant like mom jeans. Oh, they've yeah. gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm like, I'm glad I know why they're doing it. The com big denim. <laughs> big denim has to sell a new pair of jeans. A pair of jeans will last it until you bust a hole in like bust a hole in them. Yep. A good pair of jeans will last what? Fifteen years. Maybe really more. long time. Very long time. I still occasionally wear my wedding pants and those were just a those red, red ones. A red pair of jeans. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so those, my point is, is that if they didn't change the styles, we would just have one pair of jeans that was really nice, mm -hmm. that lasted 
for a very long time. And they, they don't really change the ones. styles, they just recycle the styles. So like, all right, oh, yeah, it's been it's five just, years, no, let's go back to Jinkos. There's only so many parameters, okay? There's, there's like, the waist has to stay where your pants stay on. So they gotta stay tight, mm -hmm. enough till your pants stay on. It's, it's, do the thighs get wide or do the, the, the bottoms get wide? It's like, how wide yep. do the thighs and the... Yep. That's the, that's the whole game, and they just change. They probably just have it like a five years from now, we'll change it to this style. <laughs> yep. And then they have like the low rise <laughs> versus the high rise. That's a thing they can change. Yep. So it's been high rise has been back for a while. Even it'll, with hairstyles, it just recycles every oh, yeah, five I'll, years. I'm, like uh, right now, I mean, actually, I don't really know what's in or not. My assumption is that like Brad Pitt, where it's like faded, yeah, and then hair, like it was in the seventies. Like, is that what's in now? What's in now? What's, what's in right now? I'll tell you what's in right now, because I see these little kids. I, I I work with fourth and fifth graders, and then on Wednesdays I work with high schoolers. And I'll tell you, the funniest stuff is in to me. Okay. First, it's like kids who have, like, fades around yep. the back and sides, and then they perm the top, so it's curly on the top. Ah. And everybody's into curly, so they all get their hair permed. Wow. So that's one haircut that's, like, perm super is back. in. Yeah, they perm their hair on the top, and then they fade it on the sides and back. So that looks silly to me. Everybody looks like a rooster. I'm like, look at all these cats out here. When the sun comes up, do you all go? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're all just like. <laughs> <laughs> you all look like a bunch of chickens out here. Okay, so that's 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 what's happening. But also mullets. We're we're, we're from Oklahoma, so in Oklahoma, there's this resurgence. I think, and I don't know if it's cultural because it's countercultural to be a redneck, mm -hmm. but I think there's this embrace of like Southern Midwestern values. Yeah. And part of that is bringing back redneck stuff proudly. I think that's part of the counterculture in the, in the country music world. So in Oklahoma, I am seeing th these kids wearing square toed boots and like completely shaved sides and then long down the back, mm -hmm. which is like, like worse looking than the Joe Dirt mullet. Like it's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. I think mullets are cool, but in the 70s variety, like not the 80s one where it's like, you know. Right. But these kids are doing it and I'm more down with that, I guess, because that seems like a countercultural thing. But the cultural thing is literally like, everybody looks like Timothy Chalamet now. Like mm. everyone is, <laughs> everyone's just like, <laughs> <laughs> up top. Yeah, that's funny to me. Well, I guess you could pretty easily be in then. I you could. Just All I have to do fade. is get the fade and like grow it out on the top more. Yep. In fact, I cut my own hair today. Nice. I did. I cut what's called a shag, which is a very 70s haircut style, but you just tie your hair up on the top and you just, and then whenever you let it fall back down, it's shorter on the top than it is on the back and sides. I see. And that's what I've been doing, but that's just because I don't want to pay somebody money. Makes sense. I've never wanted to pay people money to cut my hair, which is, yeah. I don't know if that's a good thing, but. I don't know. Also, I don't know. I don't, I'm so tired of, of doing, of chasing the styles. When we were kids. I've never, yeah, I've never been into chasing styles. And I don't know, you can, you can if that's a good or bad thing, whatever, it's, it feels good to me. Well, you have to, as a, as a member of society functioning, you have to monitor what, you look like and what it says about you to other people. And right. you have to choose to, to you have to choose something, right? So I do um try to split the difference between who am I, who do I want to be to the world, and then how is it useful to me in my overall goals. Yep. And so it used to I used to very much identify with my style or haircut or whatever even like what kind of guitars I played were like based on what it looked like. And now it's more like, okay, what is functional to me? What functional what, is, yeah. is what I lean towards yeah. to a fault. Uh, I don't really care about what's in at all because it almost kind of seems fake to me mm -hmm. whenever people are like, well, what's in? What is everybody else wearing? I want to wear that. Well, yeah, that is that 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 is what's kind of silly to me. Like when I go out on the scene, I thought I was like special for my '70s haircut, 
Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh man, this is because I really like Beatles and I really like old stuff. And like, so like my 70s haircut is uniquely me. I get out there, everybody our age, same exact freaking haircut. <laughs> like every one of them. I was like, why does everybody look like me? Ah, dang it. It's because I'm just a product of what I fell in love with when I yeah. was a kid. And, and I'm not alone in it at all. Right. I'm like, not even close to unique. Like when, uh, I, like I said, I, I lean very much on the functional comfort side to, to, yeah. to, to wear. I pretty much. I feel like you wear hats just because you don't want to mess with your hair. That's exactly right. That's that. I mean, and I've been that way since I was a teenager. And then same thing with my shoes. Like you know, I in my, as I was a kid or when I was a teenager, I was like, how often do people actually look at shoes? Mm -hmm. And I've discovered that it was all the time. People look at shoes all the time. Yeah, my shoes suck, but. I can, when I'm ready to go, mm -hmm. I can just slip them on. It takes me five seconds. But when I buy a new <laughs> pair of shoes, I have to sit there <laughs> for like a minute trying to fit it onto my foot. And so my, my instinct is to go, what can I get in my feet the fastest? Old crappy shoes. All right, I'm going with those. Because it just, it just is more uh, functional. You know, I'll, I'm going to let you in on a secret, bro. What's that? This is going to change your life. All right, tell me. Okay, brand new pair of shoes. Dude. Okay, this is so funny. You can go buy these laces, okay? okay. They aren't laces. They are laces, right? They look like laces, but they are uh, elastic shoelaces with little retainers. And it you can just lace them up yep. and then hide the retainer underneath, and then your shoe becomes a slip-on. Oh, if nice. It's a... Nice. I'd love that. I know. And my shoes. I know. Are and like, so dumb. listen, this is this is essentially me and you saying that we're gonna go buy Velcro shoes. It's the same. <laughs> you know, you see an old guy and he's just like, screw it, Velcro shoes. Velcro shoes. <laughs> Eventually, he gives up entirely, and he's Velcro shoe man. Yep. Listen, you can buy the cool shoe and convert them to Velcros. That's a great idea. I have a pair of Vans. That you've that done I've that converted, too? and it's the it's my number one right now. Oh, I'm like, I, mean, I, would I wake up, do that. and I have cool cowboy boots that I wear sometimes at the shows or whatever, or you know, I've got some Chelsea boots I wear too. But those are all slip on shoes. <laughs> I this is one of the only pairs of shoes that I tie. You have to sit there and tie. Yeah, yep. I'll, I'll tie my shoe for like church <laughs> on Sundays. You know. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll pull out my nice shoes. Date night. Look what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Getting late tonight. Like, it is like that. It's like, <laughs> hey, babe, look. <laughs> look at this. I'm, I'm not wearing these. my crappy shoes. <laughs> you know Me and you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He's tied his shoes tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Steve Jobs, he wore the same. He didn't give... A crap about what was in style. He had a closet full of the exact same pair of pants mm -hmm. and the exact same shirt because he thought in his his mind was, I'm not going to waste time thinking about what I'm going to wear today. Mm -hmm. I can use that time figuring out how am I going to change the world today. He's right. Yeah. He's literally right. Like, mm -hmm. I, I uh, look at my life right now and functionally, like, I used to, I, okay, there's this rule in this book called The War of Art that mm -hmm. is, I've read probably half a dozen times now. It's a beautiful book. One of the rules in its sequel called Going Pro is an artist never identifies with their tools, okay? Um, and this is a trap that I think guys are particularly um, susceptible to falling into because... We use objects. For our identity? Yes, and it shows our, our, our level in society. So if I drive, um, let's say if I drive, if I could drive a Toyota Corolla, and it's the perfect car, mm -hmm. it gets 35 to 40 miles a gallon, its insurance is rock bottom cheap, it's invincible, it almost never breaks, you just change the oil, make sure that timing belt's changed you know, every 100,000 miles or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And the car lasts forever. But guys will choose to go out and buy Mustangs, Camaros, Lambos, uh, the Supras, whatever. Yeah. Sports cars, or they'll, they'll buy trucks, or they'll buy whatever they, whatever they think is cool. 
to indicate, hey, I'm the kind of guy who has this. And I know that because I bought a sports car at one point. Yep. And I thought that it was going to level me up in society in some way. I felt good about myself because I had this sports car or whatever. That is bull. Yeah. Okay, no one gives a crap about that. And nope. furthermore, to, to my ends is that as a musician, I thought my whole life that if I bought the particular kind of guitar that my heroes bought, mm -hmm. that that would somehow give me this placement in society as like, oh, well, he plays that kind of guitar just like his heroes, or he plays that kind right. of whatever. So all of that is just bull. Yeah. Right? It's funny how everything... It doesn't work at all. Yeah. And th the as I actually have became a professional, I've gone pro, I actually, my house is filled with crap I don't need. And I desire deeply to get rid of all of my closet full of clothes. I, I want to get rid of all of my guitars that I don't actually take straight to the show and right. do the work with. And believe me, that's a lot. Yeah. There's like one guitar that I would fight you if you tried to take from me because it's the one that I that makes like that I just use all the time. And all of our heroes were actually that way. All of our heroes that do the work. If you identified with the kind the brand of camera that we're shooting this podcast on right now, mm -hmm. no one can even tell. Right. No, that's, yeah. what, that's what I was going to say. It, it's funny that every expensive material item only is expensive for one reason, and that is status. You can get a BMW mm -hmm. or a Toyota, and they're probably most likely the exact same car. And in mm -hmm. fact, the Toyota might even be a bit higher quality car. But you mm -hmm. buy a BMW and a BMW mm -hmm. because you want the status. Just to show you buy, people that you, you can. You buy Gucci because mm -hmm. you want the status. Mm -hmm. You buy, uh, uh, what was one of the things that you named just now? It was, or, or like a high tier uh, name brand guitar yeah. for the status. Right. Essentially though, you're just getting, you're just getting suckered to give some other dude who's like, you know what sells? Status. Yep. Uh, you're giving him your money because he mm -hmm. figured out how human psychology works. Yep. I've never been a sports car guy. Yep. The only thing that I like to spend a lot of money on is vacations. Yeah. Or experiences. Or experiences. Or technology, mm -hmm. because then it'll speed yeah. up my production. But that's time. a good price. Like, that's a good spend. So for me... I've got all these superfluous things that are just for showing off. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize, I convinced myself in the moment that I needed them. I was like, I have to have that sound because what if I want to make this sound? Right. It's like, no, 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 no. You could listen to everything I've ever recorded and you could not tell the difference. From what guitar you were playing? Yeah. The, yeah. And I could sit there and probably guess which one it was. <laughs> <laughs> like, most likely. Right. But... I only know because of the time that I was doing it. So when like when we I, we don't an artist does not identify with their tools. Don't identify with your tools. Yeah. Does it work or not? Yeah, it's good. And furthermore, if you have an amazing piece of work, this is what's so funny, is that it doesn't matter what John Lennon played on Rubber Soul, Revolver, whichever pick a Beatles album, Abbey Road. Right? It doesn't matter what guitar he chose to play. If somebody, if we could prove that John Lennon played a Squire uh, dog shit guitar, like, like dog shit model, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Pick, pick the worst guitar you can possibly imagine. If he had been like, yeah, no, I played a Tiesco, like, Chinese garbage guitar, those things would go. Yep. They'd be like a billion zillion dollars just because. Just because he did it. Exactly. Yeah, you know, so go be awesome and then let the tools, psh, who cares? Right. They don't care. Mm -hmm. To them, all of these classic guitars, all of these super cool cars, whatever it is, and whatever field you're into, they didn't care about their object like you thought they did. Yeah. Do you know what NFTs are? Uh, yes. Have you heard of uh, Board Ape Yacht Club? Mm -mm. Okay, so it was. Uh, it's... In like 2021 or 2020 mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, NFTs just exploded. Right. And you can't do anything with them. The only thing that... Uh, Non-fungible. Non-fungible tokens. Yeah. The only thing that you could do with essentially the Board 8 Yacht Club NFTs yeah. was get a status. 
yeah. that you're basically purchasing, uh, purchasing. Like Justin Bieber had one, yeah. uh, DJ Khaled had one, Drake had one. All these yeah. big name celebrities bought into this NFT uh, club called Board Ape, Board Ape Yacht Club, mm -hmm. and they were they got up to the point where they're like a quarter of a million dollars for just a digital image of two hundred fifty thousand dollars, two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a digital image of a monkey. Yeah, and what that monkey would do get you into parties and give you the status symbol mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. So that in itself just shows how important and how hard status will sell to people. And within in reality, in my mind, and I'm I'm definitely uh, on the mind in the minority on this. Like when I see a dude driving a Lambo, mm -hmm. in my mind I'm like he must have a, a tiny pecker because he's trying so hard. You know I do I mean? know one guy with a Lambo, and he does have a very small penis. <laughs> That's what I just where my mind goes. Tim, like, if man, you're out there, Mr. if you watch Child this, over I know. Here. <laughs> yeah, he's got something. Tim he's, is the reason they invented the millimeter. <laughs> he's got so many insecurities that he's got to counteract that by getting a Lambo, and it just it's never it's never intrigued me. I, I've never been a sports car guy. I I, I just yeah. like. Well, I'll tell example, you. I'll tell you. I'll tell shoes. you from owning a sports car, not a Lambo, but from owning a sports car. What happens is is that you might just really like something. Yeah, okay. no, that could actually yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely be the case. You might just really like something, and I think in the case of Tim, with the small, <laughs> um, is that when he showed me his Lambo, I was geeking out about it. Cool. Okay, so he he let me sit in it, the Italian leather, like oh, and it was tiny, and it was like sucked you in, and he's like, you want to go drive it? And I was like, I didn't get to drive it, but do you want to go ride around in it? And I was like, yeah, sure. And we it sucked, and right. it was awesome. That's it safe. was amazing, and it was terrible. Right, yeah. it, it, it it hauled ass. Right, <laughs> it was scary. Yeah, and the dude had to have like a special little lift to lift it up to get over speed bumps. Oh my god! Like the, the suspension had to be like get over speed bump mode, <laughs> and then like you know, this is like a terrible vehicle. <laughs> yeah. for what it is, but also amazing. Right? Yeah, I've been in one. Yeah, they're very and, uh, uncomfortable. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's yeah, you're just like uh, yeah, yeah, and you're firing a bazillion miles an hour. What I would but, but, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on for a car is a car that just makes me so comfortable. Like, you know, super air. Well, those exist. I know, I know, yeah. and I would buy that. I would, whenever I yeah. get my loads of cash back, I will buy a $300,000 car that is just a comfortable <laughs> You know what I mean? Are you going to have somebody drive it for you? No, I'll drive it, but I just want to be able to just, I just yeah. want my car to give me a hug constantly as I'm as I'm driving. Yeah. Well, let me, let, me, let me finish what I was trying to say. This Lambo thing, he just genuinely, he had like a, you know, Lamborghini Countach on his wall when he was a kid in the 80s. Mm. You know what I mean? And so it, for him, it was a dream. Yeah. And when he finally got it, here's exactly what happens. It, he got it, it sat in the garage with the cover on it. He never drives it, ever. He's not Lambo man. He's not trying to show off his Lamborghini. Right. He doesn't let anyone know that he has it. I just happened to be talking to him about cars, and he's like, oh, yeah, I finally got, you know, I was talking about my Miata. I was like, I finally got this dream car of mine. It's what I drove in Need for Speed. And he was like, oh, when I was a little kid, I liked Lamborghini whatevers. I don't know what his model was. But we went, and he's like, yeah, I got one. I'm like, what, you have a Lamborghini? <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, I got a good deal on one, so I bought it. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, eh. yeah. like Dave Chappelle says, he's like, my life is like an above ground pool. Eh, it's a pool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even like, and so with Tim, he was like, eh, I mean, it didn't fix the hole in my heart. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It didn't fix this human suffering that I continue to have, even though I have solved a lot of problems. Yep. I didn't fix everything. It didn't fix me. The Lamborghini didn't fix me. None of the guitars fixed me. The Miata didn't fix me. You know, no, no, nothing fixes you. You still suffer. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, in some ways, it's a good thing. And, and that's where... Like nothing materialistically fixes you, yeah, is what you're saying. What, what I think really does fix people, though. What do you, well, I mean, when, I want to hear your hot take. What, what do you think fixes people? Uh, relationships people. fix people. Yeah. How so? What, I mean, like, life in itself, for me, the importance of it all is, is finding people to, to experience things with. Like, you got a funny joke, you want to tell somebody. Right. And see the reaction. You want to climb Mount Everest, you 
most likely want to do it with somebody and share an experience, create some memories. I think the root of happiness for the most part uh, comes from finding people to live life with. So community. Community. Yeah. And I think that's the most important thing. I mean, also in like a sidebar, money makes me happy because it I, I broke creates, up with a girl who said that. It, it creates <laughs> a sense of true freedom. You know what I mean? Right. So, 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 having enough resources that you can devote yourself to others. So you can put your time into more experiences with the people yeah. that you love. And that's what I did in 2021. Whenever I was just racking it in, like me and Lauren traveled every yeah. single month, created so many memories. Uh, even with my kids, we got to go on a lot of vacations and stuff, and that was. But nobody all gets because not very many people get to do that, Jared. So what do you what, what do you what do you what, what would you say to people? I, who I, can't? I said a sidebar. A sidebar is yeah. money equals freedom, freedom. In a sense. So that kind of makes yeah. me happy. But it's not the source of all happiness. The source of all happiness, in my opinion, is yeah. maintaining and finding people that you love and want to spend right. time around. Uh, I don't think. I, you know, I, I actually, man, I don't travel hardly at all. Mm -hmm. All right. And I know that I'm going to have to pretty soon because ladies love to travel. You don't have to travel. I'm not, I don't want to be misunderstood. But I don't, I'm not saying you have to travel to be happy. I'm just saying that's just like an, a way to create an experience. The freedom. Yeah. The freedom to do it. To pursue. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever, whatever. you want to do. I don't think that even that fixes it for me. What I've makes done, you happy then? Because I've done, I've done all that. I've, I'm going to say all that. I've done all that. I've, I've spent time out of the country. I got fortunate enough to be put in positions with music where I was in the South Pacific in different countries, and then I got to go to South America for a little bit. These different things were very cool, but they didn't fix me either, mm -hmm. right? And I, and I think that some people fall into the trap of I need to have these experiences to fix me. Right. But like you still have to live in this body, in this mind, right here, right now, all the time. Right. So I don't think that that's the answer either. I, I, uh, to me, the closest thing to the answer that I've found is that living a life of meaning mm -hmm. and purpose brings you, brings you into contact with the possibility of happiness. Like happiness is uh, not to be aimed for. You can't shoot to be happy. Man, I really wish I was happy today. If you focus on happy, then you're just gonna chase, uh, you're gonna chase, well, there's a word for it. Delusion? No. Um, Ignorance? No, it's like, a, it's like a gluttony of experience. Mm. If you thought, well, man, I really liked Banjo-Kazooie on the N64. That made me happy. Right. And then you go down the rabbit trail of trying to play every single 3D platformer from the 90s. Well, Banjo-Kazooie might have been the best one. Mm -hmm. Or Donkey Kong 64 or whatever. You know, I, I'm just, just farting around with ideas. But you'll run that to its end. And nothing will feel like it did when you were a kid playing Banjo Kazooie that one time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When you're um, chasing experiences like that or highs, when you're trying to get high all the time, you won't be able to experience the goodness of the norm normal things in your life. I think that there's like a, a balance to one, if you're chasing meaning and purpose, so to me, re the reduction of suffering of others, if that's what you're chasing, that is a noble pursuit. Mm -hmm. And then when you get wore out all day from your job of trying to reduce suffering in others, then you go home and you realize, oh, my life had some meaning and purpose. And then sometimes you see that your work helped another person. Right. And then happiness appears. That is like what I think is the actual thing. And there's a whole other thing too, is if you're trying to be high all the time, like metaphorically high or literally high, mm -hmm. like if you find something that, that hits the dopamine button for you, like for me, I used to, I'm, I am, 
I have a full on addiction to improving my musical stuff. Right. I just love it. I love buying the next version of the guitar, the better version of the guitar. I love doing this dumb game where I buy and sell stuff and try to bigger, better my way into this amazing, perfect lineup of instruments. But that doesn't do it. it that, that high of like, I wanted this guitar called it a casino so bad. It was the electric guitar that I wanted more than anything in the world. I woke up every day. I used to have dreams about playing one. This is when I was 13. Mm -hmm. And then when we were 16, we got that gig and we earned that 400 bucks. What was it? 400 bucks over, I can't remember over the summer we made enough money yeah. that I had enough in my wallet that the first one I found, I bought. Nice. Okay? Yep. And I was so high from that. I was like, yes, <laughs> I have this one instrument, okay? And then I tried to chase that dragon again and again and again and again and again. And I have a whole ass vintage recording <laughs> studio in my house full of stuff yep. and nothing, none of it, not a single one of those things made me feel like that first. That first purchase. Yeah. And, and so like to me, I think the trick is if, if you spend your life chasing uh, experiences or things or any sort of thing in your life to bring the dopamine to your head, if you're chasing that, you're chasing the dragon, you will always fail at it. The trick is to turn down the volume on everything. Like for me, I dream of only having one acoustic, one electric, one bass. Really? Yeah, because if I did that, then I wouldn't be I wouldn't be chasing this dumb, stupid dragon of like. <laughs> but you're still chasing it all the time, <laughs> all the time. Still Luckily, it, it hasn't hurt then. me bad enough. Right. That it, that like my little addiction can stay. Um, but I dream about it, you know, and and so like. If you could turn the volume down on all of it, if somebody took all of my guitars away and just gave me the cash and put it in my 401k <laughs> where I couldn't get to it, yeah. one, I'd be pissed. <laughs> but two, then I would just go play and love the three guitars that I had. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I would make a lot more art, especially if I wasn't allowed to buy other ones. Do you find yourself... Uh, spending time figuring out which guitar you're going to play for which part? Yes. That's a complete waste of time. Yeah, as I was say, do you feel like Absolute it's a waste bullshit, of time? Absolute bullshit activity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a complete waste of my time. I, I, I spent, I, I, so this one, there's a guitar in this room right now that I just recently bought. And I told Mandy on the phone, I told my girlfriend on the phone, I said, I'm not allowed to go to Guitar House. And this was like two weeks before this happened. I was yeah. like, I'm not actually allowed to go there. I'm like, what are you talking about? And I was like, I can't go. If I go in there, if I have money in the bank, I will spend it on a guitar. I will not have gas in the tank. <laughs> we, will, we, will, we, will, we, will, we will we will buy a guitar. <laughs> and I get in there this last time because I have this guitar student who's this rich old man who, not old man, but he's an older guy. And not the same guy, but has a supercar. He drives a supercar to his guitar lesson. Oh, my God. Okay? And I'm like, hey, man, you know what you need? And he's like, what? Because he plays this cheap dog crap guitar that somebody gave him. And I was like... You like punk rock. Let's go get you the guitar that your hero plays. And he's like, yeah. And, 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 and I convinced him that it might, it might inspire him to practice a little bit more. He might like the, it just is a better instrument because mm -hmm. he plays such a bad instrument. And plus his money is no object to him. So like we went down to the vintage guitar store. And homie, we played $4,000, $5,000 Gibson Les Pauls. Like we were just trying them out, yep. you know. And then on the wall was that freaking Guitar right over there in the corner. Yeah, and it's it wasn't half of the co the cost of his guitars that he was messing with, but I played it and I was like, oh my god, this is so much better than mine. <laughs> and I was and I did I did girl math or guy math in my head. You know what I mean? I went yeah. if I sell my other one and then I sell this one and then I do the da -da -da, then I'll do the flippy floppy and it'll be fine. <laughs> and then my dumb ass walked out of the guitar store with a guitar and he didn't buy one that day. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, so I'm you like, went there to yeah, I went the there to get him one, and you and got a guitar. yeah, and I walked out with with a guitar. <laughs> it was stupidest, like, oh, like, it, but it didn't. It made me happy for five minutes. I mean, I'm looking at it. There it is. It, I mean, I like it. 
It's really cool. And, and as a kid, I would have shit my pants looking at that. Mm. I thought that's that's the answer. Like, but it's not. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. What is it Jim Carrey says? He says, I, w- I hope all your dreams come true so you know they don't help. It doesn't fix anything. Mm-hmm. That's what he says. I hope everything you've ever wanted ever happens to you so you know it doesn't fix it. It doesn't so nothing. Because... He's grown up to be like a wise old man, Jim Carrey. Yeah, because he, he... Did called... you know that he, before he made it in, in Hollywood, he wrote himself a $3 million check and stored it in his wallet and would just pull it out and look at it every single day mm-hmm. until eventually he manifested it to the point where it actually happened. That's cool. It's really cool. So you believe in manis- manis- manif- manifestation in the way that uh, Jim Carrey does? Yeah, I think you, you can draw things to you. Mm. I mean, it's just like a I mindset. certainly think that even if it doesn't work, it works. It works you for your I mean? mindset. Yeah. It, it gives you something to, you know, believe in and look forward to. A if, good you just, if you're just going to walk around going, man, my life sucks. Yeah. It's not going to get better from here. That's literally where it's going to stay because you've convinced yourself that that's how it's going to be. Therefore, mm-hmm. that is what it will be. Mm-hmm. But if you, you know, have a dream or are, man- are manifesting some kind of change in your life, most likely you're going to put more effort into actually making that happen than rather if you were just like, nah, this is my life. This is where it's going to be. Oh, yeah. Every single day. I remember uh, waking up when we were kids and going to school and being like, hey, dude, we're going to get famous and not have to go to college. That's our goal. We are going to get so good at music right now. <laughs> like whenever we were practicing in, in, the, in the music room upstairs at your house or if we were practicing at my house, we were just making noise into the room, and I know it sounded like shit. I know it was terrible, but we were doing it, and in our heads we were imagining, we are rock gods. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the beginning. We are the next Beatles. This is we are we are yeah. We were like listening to Ben Folds and Reliant K and stuff, and thinking like, it's only a matter of time until you know we have our own bitches ain't shit or brick or whatever <laughs> <laughs> you know you know. And uh, I love that. And, and I carry that with me. Like I was telling, I was telling my um, my guitar student Grenville, "Hey, you need to put yourself in. You need if you want to play like these guys, just go imagine you're you are him, mm-hmm. or you're somebody just like him, or somebody who is similar to but still retaining your identity. Go imagine, put yourself in that place, role play." Like when you're playing guitar, turn it all the way up. Like just, I mean, no one's gonna stop you. Like go out to your garage and just crank your amp and get out there, put some earplugs in and just wail. Like there's something so cathartic about that. Yep. And cool and imagine yourself in the success that you're desi- that, that 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 you want. And what'll happen? Is, I feel like when you do that, is in some ways you are preparing yourself. Yep. For that success. Yep. You you're faking it till you make it even in your own thoughts. Whenever uh whenever I graduated my in my senior year description mm-hmm. of like what I'm going to do after school was I'm going to make music history. Yeah. <laughs> Never did that. But, <laughs> I know, yeah. But yeah. in the moment that's what that's was how I see that's I how like, I saw myself. Yeah. Is like a guy that goes out and makes it big in music. My uh desire changed over time. Yeah, and that's okay. That's perfectly Which okay. Which is perfectly fine. But yeah, I, it hooked me, and I haven't gotten rid of it yet. So I'm wondering, like, I, I imagine some days, like, what it would be like if somebody cut my hands off. Like, would I be okay? Like, what, you'd probably figure out how to play guitar with your feet. <laughs> the toe <laughs> guy. <laughs> there is. I've seen that guy. Yeah. There's lots of people who do it. No, I don't know if I'd do that. But I, 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 I do deeply. need to know from myself that if I lost everything that I was, I've was, i tried to pursue, mm-hmm. that I would still be okay. Yeah. And I think that that resol- like you need that. Whatever it is at the core of yourself, if you have to reinvent who you are because you've failed at all the things you wanted to do, that you're still okay. Well, I think I've actually lived through that for me because yeah. uh, a, a large desire of mine is to, to be extremely successful. So I've always been uh, pursuing it. I wanted to be a millionaire by the time I was 30 
and I did that. And then I became a millionaire. Yeah. But then by 32, I had lost millions. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm still here. Yeah. It didn't wreck it didn't, my entire it didn't, it didn't mindset. Change, yeah. It didn't change yeah. uh, who I was. It yeah. just really, if anything, taught me a hard life lesson. Yeah. And so I'm still on the pursuit yeah. to get back there. But it doesn't, even if you got it, you're still stuck being Jared. Yeah. You, you still have to wake up and realize you're a ginger kid. Yep. <laughs> With no soul. <laughs> oh, and now no this millions. Is it. This is it. It doesn't even matter which religion I pick because it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't have a soul. I don't have a soul. Mom and dad, why didn't you give me a soul? All right. I wanted to, I wrote these uh, these uh, topics down last week. We never got to them. I want to get to them. We'll probably okay. just skip the dad jokes this week because I still haven't edited together the, the yeah. shorts for the last week. Okay. Um, so do you know who Burt Kreischer is and Tom Segura? Yeah, Burt Kreischer is the guy with the pop where he pulls his shirt off. Yep, and, and Tom then, Segura is like yeah. his best friends. They do. A I do love Tom Segura. I think he's one of the funniest. I think his wife is funny. They do a podcast called uh, Two Bears, One Cave. <laughs> That's have, such a funny name. Have you, have you seen their podcast <laughs> no, at all? But I know both of those guys because I've, I've listened to them on, you know, on Rogan a lot. And then like, yeah, okay. Anyways, I'm, I'm a fan of both of them as well. Yeah. Recently, they uh, came out with their own vodka called like Porce Lo Locos or something yeah. like that, okay? And they did an entire podcast episode mm -hmm. only selling or pitching their new vodka that they made. Okay. The The episode mm -hmm. had a disproportion of likes and dislikes mm -hmm. of like one to three. Of every dislikes? one person liked it for yeah. every three people disliking disliked it. it. Yeah. And it was because on the whole episode, they were they would be like, we just we got this huge announcement. We can't wait to tell you guys about it. You're yeah. gonna love it. Yeah. The announcement is we made vodka. Yeah. And we did this for you. <laughs> <laughs> we did this for the fans. Yeah. And so they essentially had an hour and a half info uh, infomercial about their vodka and people yeah. hated it. Yeah. Um what do you do you have any thoughts on that? There's been a lot of backlash on Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer. Yeah. Because of this. Another thing that Tom Segura did as yeah. a reaction to this yeah. is he he said a statement that kind of actually made me a little mad. I still love him, but I yeah. thought this was poor taste. Yeah. He, he essentially said, uh, I don't really care about the poor's opinions. Oh, because is, is, is it a high dollar vodka? It's not. No, no. It's it's. I think it's a mid mid tier dollar vodka. Basically, yeah. he's saying that people that aren't as accessible as me, I don't yeah. really care about your opinion. Even though if you actually look back at the whole scenario, the reason why you are Tom Segura is because the poor's yeah. thought you were funny yeah. and chose to pay attention to you rather than someone else. I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. I think that there's a certain amount of. Uh, Humans can be like crabs trapped in a bucket. Right. Okay? Sometimes one crab will climb on top of the pole pile of crabs and almost get out. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. The crabs almost got freedom. And then the other crabs grab him. And pull him back, pull him back in. <laughs> okay? Okay. And, uh, boy, there's a bunch of asshole crabs that grab that guy and pull him back right. in whenever they could get the guy out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think... The, the good version of success is whenever you get to the top of the bucket and you grab on and you say, give me your hand, asshole crab. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you and throw pull, someone else over the top. Yep. You know what I mean? And then you get over the top eventually. But if, if the crabs coordinated their efforts and three crabs stood on top of each other and they made a crab ladder, they threw everybody out. And then the guy at the top of the ladder grabbed crab number one at the bottom and then crab number two, and then they all made a, a crab tower on the other side and grabbed the, the crab that got to the top first and pulled him over. They'd all be out of the bucket. Right. Or it wouldn't take that many crabs to knock the bucket over and no. everybody gets out. This, but this so is, like, with that analogy, yeah. this is how I envision Tom Segura. Yeah. He's the crab that gets at the top of the bucket. Yeah. And he looks back he down at the other off crab. All the other. <laughs> he just <swipes laughs> like, Just me! Just me! I'm the only one that's allowed to be up here! That's how I envision uh, I don't know if, I don't know, I don't think Tom meant it that way, most likely. I think that we're probably taking his quote in bad, 
in bad faith. No, he, he, and then maybe also, not. I but... think that uh, I think that I see myself more like a crab at the top of the bucket instead yeah. of the crabs at the bottom. But so I, I I tend to be like he's a winner. Yeah. yeah, no, that's great that he's a winner. But like, let's say let's say that you make it big in music. Okay. Yeah. Eventually, I, I will have some level. Of, I've already had some level of success. Okay. I will let's say you make more. it really big in yeah. music, mm -hmm. and you get up there in in someone's interview, and you says, "Hey, Donnie, what do you think about your fans?" And you respond in a way I'd like, be like uh, "I think they're all a bunch of stupid well, idiots." I'm likely to say something like that. <laughs> really? Yeah, but I'm not. I don't. I don't mean that. But I'm likely to say something just as distasteful and not cool. Here's what I think. I don't actually think, I don't resent my audience. I don't resent the people who are there for me. Put you where you're at. Yeah, I don't resent them. But also, they didn't help me get here. They did, though. No. I have no fans right now. 40 people listen to... Well, I'm Lonely's. saying, no, no, but we're talking relatively. You know. Let's say you're already yeah. there, and you got, you got there because of your hard work and because people found you... Uh, talented. And yeah, so, but I have to ignore them. I have to ignore them. Yes, you have to ignore them. You in constantly a, in a have sense. to ignore them. No, you, you can't, can't ignore them th th wholeheartedly because then if you do that, they're going to lose interest in you. You have to make art that you like. That's right. That's just why sure I have thing. to put the blinders on and try not to listen to them. That's a sure thing. But if and you so he, start, if he decides, hey, I'm going to make a vodka company, and I'm going to do it my way, and I'm going to do it the best I can. That's fine. I have to ignore everybody else. That that's fine, but if you it, but if you put your vodka out there and people are like, hey, yeah, you your vodka kind of sucks, and your response is instead of oh, why does it suck? Tell me. It, you can, like you can respond that way. Okay, yeah. tell me. I want to learn. But his, instead, his response was, pores suck. Well, he didn't. I'm not. I, I don't. I don't know what he said. Number one, I don't know. He, what he said, said I don't care about the opinion of a bunch of pores. Well, I don't care. Lion don't care about the opinion of sheep. That's what he should have said. Okay. Um, and I do agree with that, that, but I don't agree with calling them pores. Right. That's dumb. That is dumb. Yeah. You're like, you're like, he, buying he made the a bad, feeds you. He made a bad sentence, but you make bad sentences all the time. All the time. Yes, yeah, I yeah. do. I do. You just but don't happen to be. Really, my point, Tom my Segura. point is, is, to, is once you get in that spot, I think you probably want to remain humble. Like, like understand how you, you should. got there. You, you don't want to be like the guy that's at the top of the hill being the crab that's just swiping down at all the other crabs. Yeah. You want to be like the dude that's at the top and be like, hey, you can get here too. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. You're not poors. You're just poor right now. We're all something. just crabs. We're all just crabs, We're you know? We're all just crusty Whatever. crabs in a bucket. Anyways, I didn't care that that they made their vodka. I thought it was fine. A lot of celebrities do that. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of Burt Kreischer m mainly. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'll try this out sometime. Did you? Was it good? No, because at, whenever Tom Segura started speaking, I lost interest in purchasing it. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, well, yeah, you got to be careful. I mean, I, th I, I do agree with you that Tom should not have said that. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. But I also think that he probably just misspoke. Yeah, he probably misspoke. Well, he should, you know. Yeah. Fix and his and words when, or when he says pores, he probably doesn't mean people who are so economically destitute that they don't have the opportunity. No, to buy he his means vodka. I'm a, I'm a, a higher level of society than you are, so you're a poor. It's like it's basically yeah. he's the king of the country, and he called everybody else peasants. Mm. He's a tyrant. I don't know why his that okay. his statement pissed me off so much, but it did. Yeah, but Jared, you're one of those. I'm or a, have been, I have been. Yeah, but but like, I but I never, at the upper echelon. I've never I never called everybody pores. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, whenever my friends needed help, I was like, "Yes, let me help you." I'm finally in a spot where I can. Yeah. I want to be the guy that helps you. Right. Well, that made you. Yeah. If you had that kind of resources, I wonder what guy like Segura does with his money. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately. If you have all those resources and you don't do things to help people, imagine your conscience. Right. I think actually, whenever oh, that was another thing, I, I, I didn't I didn't mention this last time, but that was a huge factor. Whenever I had a crap ton of money, mm -hmm. I was often just filled with happiness because I had the ability and the resources to like help somebody that needed help, mm. and that felt good. I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. I liked making somebody else's day brighter. Mm -hmm. Like there was this one time I was driving down uh, Yale, mm -hmm. and there was this homeless guy mm -hmm. 
that just looked super sad, like, mm -hmm. like was on the side of the road, anything helps, I'm hungry, mm -hmm. blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. And I saw him and I didn't have any cash on me. Mm -hmm. So what I did is, is I tried to mark in my head where he was. Mm -hmm. I went to the bank and grabbed $60 out of the ATM. Mm -hmm. I came back and he wasn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. But I was determined mm -hmm. to give this guy this $60. Mm -hmm. So I went into the parking lot of uh, Target and Reese's and mm -hmm. just started just like looking everywhere for this kid mm -hmm. or this guy. And eventually I found him. Mm -hmm. Uh, like 10 minutes later and he was curled up in the corner just like staring at the ground mm -hmm. and I, I pulled up next to him walked out grabbed the 60 bu bucks and said hey have a good day mm -hmm. handed it to him got in my car mm -hmm. and started backing out the f look on his face mm -hmm. like he went from like mm -hmm. to just like, like, like got super excited and was like I got I can eat today basically is, mm -hmm. is what I assume he was thinking, and he and just, he was like, just, finally, I can buy some more crack <laughs> <laughs> or that. Maybe it could have been that. It's fine, whatever. But just the, just the shift in his face, just his facial expressions. That, Great, that I get to eat some smack because I made an impact on his yeah. day. It felt so good to me. Right. No, I, I do. I do feel that. That does feel good. And I'm sure Tom, and, and just to go back to Tom, I'm sure he's a great guy or whatever. I'm not going to make big assumptions. I just was, just that statement made me angry yeah. in the moment. Not like, oh, I'm going to hate Tom Segura for forever, but it did make me decide I'm not trying your vodka. Mm. Maybe after, maybe later. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like in my heart, I feel like a winner who is just a matter of time till I'm a winner. Yeah. Like on paper. Mm-hmm. No, nah, actually, I am a winner on paper. Like, as far as, like, my life is full of meaning, purpose, and I am, do not struggle right now with any sort of level of depression. I feel good in body and mind and thankful. Um, so because of that, I already feel like a winner. That's good. Um, but... Um, The idea of resenting the people at the top of the bucket just feels like, like my analogy, like being a crab at the bottom of the bucket, I'm ripping not, but, down a winner. I'm not, I, I think you're misunderstanding. I'm not saying resent people at the top of the bucket. Yeah. Uh, that's not what I'm saying at all. What are you saying? I'm saying the person at the top of the bucket should r remain humble. Yeah, true. And not yes. swipe at the people at the bottom. Yeah, because the crab is stepping on top of the other crabs yes. to get out the top. Yes, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do not resent yeah. people at the top. Try to learn something from them. Absolutely. Like try to progress mm -hmm. yourself so you can be the guy at the top. Mm -hmm. In no way am I saying resent the guy at the top. I'm saying yeah. once you are that guy, it's probably in that guy's best interest to remain humble and remember how he got there. You got there from hard work and you got there because you convinced people to pay attention. Because to the people decided you, yeah. you had given them something of value. Yeah. So they're going to support you all the way to the top. Exactly. Yeah, this year is the first year I contributed money to a political campaign. Oh, really? Mm hmm I gave money to Kennedy's. Oh, that's cool. I, I like it. So he's running uh, as an independent mm -hmm. this year. and it, He's not going to win it. He's not going to win it, but actually... But he earned my money. In my, in my opinion, mm -hmm. he, I think, is the one that has the biggest shot, even though the shot's small, mm -hmm. to put some kind of impact or uh, We all thought that about that Ron Paul, too, though. I didn't think that about Ron Paul. You didn't? Man, no. I mean, we were so into Ron Paul back when I was a kid or but, when I was in, in college. We thought, man, this is a conservative we can get behind. But now I'm like, man, this is a, a liberal I can get behind. Like, I yeah. really like what Kennedy is interested in. I did too. I like Kennedy too. I think he has the best shot an independent has ever had, even though that's still a pretty small shot. If he gets it. Wow. Such a sad story. I can't believe he shot himself in the back of the head six times. <laughs> you know that's what I mean? A, you know, something like that. That's going to be the headline. <laughs> oh, my God. Robert Kennedy manages to shoot himself in the back of the happen. head. How'd that happen? Wow, such a tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that doesn't happen. All right, I'm going to talk I, about this. It's, it's, his ideas are too good. His ideas are really good. That's I like the him. Problem. I like it's him a lot. I, I need to look I more into him. him. Um, but if he does make it on the ballot, there's a shot I'd vote for him. Oh, I will for certainly in the yeah, because I, I I well every time I've ever voted, I've cast my vote for somebody who I really do feel like. Whenever Trump was elected, I didn't vote for him. I voted for 
I guess Rubio, who did I, in the primary I voted for Rubio, and then at the end, at the, at the actual election, I think I picked. An independent? An independent candidate, and I can't remember who it was. Oh. But then, but yeah, I keep voting for the independent because I just, I'm a vote splitter, I guess, and all the liberals out there can hate me for it, but like, I just don't feel represented. Yeah, I get that. By the parties. Um, I wanted to talk about this last thing, and then we'll end it here. Uh... Do you know who uh, what Impulsive is? Let's say it again. Impulsive, the podcast. You know Impulsive? I've never listened to Impulsive. Okay, do you know who yet. Logan Paul is? Yes. Okay, it's his podcast. Okay, Impulsive. Okay. Yeah, Impulsive, I get it. Yeah. Okay, no okay. Do you know who Andrew Tate is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm not a fan, but yeah. Oh, that's interesting. We'll have to yeah. say that for next week. I, that's actually was my third point, was to get your thoughts on the Andrew Tate, but we'll yeah. wait until next week. All right, so they uh, Impulsive, they had this third co-host called mm-hmm. uh, George Janko. Do you know who he is? I've heard the name. Okay, George Janko, he uh, is like a comedian. Mm-hmm. He's really funny, well-spoken, and he's mm-hmm. very uh, in or very religious. Okay. Not really, not super religious, but he's a Christian, okay. and, and he, he's he's loud about uh, how he thinks okay. and all that stuff. And, and Logan Paul, he's, he's pretty much an atheist. Yeah. Uh, he thinks there's some kind of ha- higher power, doesn't think it's Jesus. Yeah. So they got in a tiff about that to yeah. where Logan Paul started basically kind of making fun of the way George Janko thinks. Sure. He told him that, uh, George, I think you need a therapist because Jesus isn't cutting it for you. Oh, God. Essentially, that's said, funny. <laughs> essentially said that to him. <laughs> Told him, he There's told a him, handful of people I want to say that to. He said, I am he like said full on, you full lack Christian. emotional intelligence, is what he said to George Shanky. Yeah. Okay, so eventually. Is it true? No, I th- no, I don't. I think if anyone like in that three, it was it's definitely Logan Paul that lacks emotional intelligence. Okay. Um. So they broke up. George Shanko got fed up with Logan Paul. Went off and did started his own podcast called okay. the George Shanko Show. Okay. And they had a big falling out. At okay. one point, Logan Paul yeah. said on his show. Something along the lines of, at least I'm Logan Paul and not someone like George Janko who yeah. has a show that nobody listens to. Okay. Essentially is what, I mean, they bleeped so out his, they bleeped out the George Janko part. It said, at least I don't have a show like, that yeah. nobody listens to. Yeah. And everybody knew exactly what yeah. he said. I'm going to, strong, strong guess that that's All the deaf people are like, I can, <laughs> yeah. I can read his lips. <laughs> I can read his lips. <laughs> George Janko. <laughs> Anyways, fast forward six months. Yeah. And now George Janko gets more views than Impulsive does. I believe that. Yeah. Because, and one of his guests was Andrew Tate. And on that episode, they got like something like 18 million views on this show. Yeah. So, again, uh, my thoughts on that is make sure you continue to treat people well. Because if you don't, right. karma's... A bitch. She's going to come back and... I know I've mistreated people. I don't even know who they are. And even if you do, you know, we all make mistakes. If you yeah. mistreat people and you recognize it... Right. Voice that you recognize it. Sure. Notice your, your, the flaw you made in a mm-hmm. certain scenario and, and try to make it right. But what do you... Do you have any thoughts on that story I just told you? Um, you don't have well, to. You don't have any. Number one... Logan Paul is, uh, you know Johnny Knoxville, yeah. jackass? Okay, the thing is about Johnny Knoxville is that he's not stupid. He's very smart, actually, yeah. Yeah, and Wee Man, cool guy. Uh, who's the craziest one of them all? He always does all the... Was it Steve-O? Steve-O. Yeah. Steve-O, brilliant human being. Yeah, he okay? yeah, is, yeah. All those guys recognize that they're valuable. Okay, to each other. Mm-hmm. Like, there is no jackass without Steve-O. Right. Literally. There's no jackass without uh, yeah, Johnny Johnny Knoxville. Knoxville starts it. Yeah. But Steve-O is the, ex- he's the ex- executor of the ideas. Yeah, he's like, the guy. He's the one with the hot wheel car up his butthole, right? Was that, was that the? <laughs> yeah, that was, was the that, that was the famous bit at the end that of the That was a famous jackass. bit. Yeah, that's the funniest thing I think I might have seen. The Hot Wheel car and the condom I, yes, in his butt, yes. and then he goes and gets an x-ray. That's, <laughs> yes. that's terrible. That is like the funniest. <laughs> <laughs> and then the doctor's like looking at the x-ray like, why do you... 
<laughs> How did this? What did we, you? You don't doing? have to tell anyone about this. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like on the. Yeah. It's on a movie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so they recognize their. Own, I don't even see them. Those guys treating each other badly mm -hmm. in that world. Logan Paul is to me the kind of character I don't know. I don't watch a lot of Logan Paul. I don't I certainly don't listen to his podcast. Yeah, it's just your perception. But my him. perception of him is that he's like a jackass guy who didn't realize how important his other jackass guys are. Yeah. And your his friend who is the well spoken George Jenko. conservative who is on his show made his show, essentially is what happens. Like with without George Jenko, there is no Logan podcast because they have to have each other. Mm -hmm. Right? Without each other, there's no. I think about the same thing with those guys over at Trigonometry. Have you ever you ever listened to that pod mm -mm. podcast? They're too conservative. Well, they're not really conservatives, but uh, they're relatively conservative guys. One of them is definitely conservative, but the other one is just kind of like, you know, swinging left a little bit. Yeah. One of them is a dumb comedian, and the other one's a brilliant comedian. But the two of them together. If the smart one ever turns on the dumb one, I would lose all the respect for the for the for the witty one. Mm -hmm. Because they need each other to they make that show They both play their happen. part to make yeah. it, to make it more entertaining. It's stupid, and if yeah. that it, like the also, it's a. Uh, I just I think about that from time to time, and one of them plays it down. He's like, I know I'm the stupid one on this <laughs> podcast. You yeah, know, you know? but he's really not. Right, he just plays the stupid guy. I, uh, they're better together, for sure. It's yeah. like Beatles minus Ringo. Yeah. Beatles minus Ringo, really? Yeah. Like, if you take Ringo out of that mix... There's no drums. Well, I mean, not just there's no drums. There's no left-handed drummer who plays his fills a beat behind because he leads with his left. That's a, such a special sound. Mm -hmm. I don't know a single person who plays like that. Ringo is, like, dead on. He's like a human click. And then all of a sudden, when he goes for a fill, he drops a beat. Yeah. And Paul's bass playing without Ringo's drumming is, it's, it's, well, you can tell. Right. You can, you can tell it, you tell it. It's the difference between Beatles recordings and Wings recordings. Right. It's the difference between the, the Paul McCartney solo records that, which by the way, are pretty good, but... None of it sounds like Beatles. Right. Without, without Ringo, all the Beatles. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's important that... And if you take a, a dump on Ringo for being the dumb one who sings Yellow Submarine, who wrote Octopus's Garden, like, yeah. You can take a shit on Ringo for... I'd like to be under the, under sea, the sea in an octopus. I did think that was one of the dumbest songs. Is a shade. Okay. okay. But... But you, if you don't have... If you don't have I'd like to be under the sea with an octopus... Then you don't have do do yep. Nobody would have played that drum part like right. that. Only that left-handed guy who plays right-handed drums. Right. Um, that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen without that. So, anyways, yeah. So I, I Logan shot himself in such a, in such a crazy way in the foot. In my perception, you just the way you're telling the story. I don't even know. I don't even. I didn't listen to him before. I definitely won't listen to him now. Mm -hmm. And I certainly don't give a crap about his boxing career. You know what <laughs> well, I mean? I think. I think the box. He's he's on WWE now. He's a wrestler. He's like the United States champion of the world right now. <laughs> in WWE. Yeah. And have you ever? Drank, That's not real. Have you ever drank Prime? That's fake. Have you ever drank Prime? No. The the, the energy drink Prime. Uh uh no. Have you heard of it? Uh uh. Oh, okay. Well then it, then. Then you're fine, but that's his drink. I don't actually hate the guy. I just hate the, how he hand, handled that situation. Well, yeah, he, you know, and I do still, think it's important in order to be entertaining, you got to have people that have different uh, opinions because if everyone's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like toast, man, yeah. I love toast, mm -hmm. and that's like the 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 conversation. Yeah. Then there's no like uh, back and forth. You got to have a little bit. I mean, I I obviously play bad guy to you sometimes yep. just for the heck of it because we're that's, making a show where we talk about stuff yep you know and that's that's how it works it's more entertaining whenever yeah. people are like uh no yeah it's like this 
Right. Instead of like, uh, yeah, it's right. exactly like that. Let's agree on everything. Yeah. So that would be a, <laughs> that'd be kind of a funny show. <laughs> it, for, for, for five minutes, it'd be funny because it'd be like, oh, me too. Me too. Oh, <laughs> oh me, me too. too. One time it's I was called on a date the Yes with... Man podcast. Yeah, yeah, the Yes <laughs> Man podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What was it? Uh, I went on a date with a girl who was like that. Oh, really? In fact, yeah, we went. I don't, know, I don't know if I wanted to say the details of this date too bad because. Well, just don't say it and then don't say a name. We went to a Beatles cover band show. And I remember at the show being like, I really don't like Yellow Submarine. <laughs> this song sucks. You know, and she's like, that's my favorite Beatles song. And then, oh, no, 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 no. She's like, this is my favorite Beatles song. And I was like, Yellow Submarine sucks. And she's like, oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I kind of remember having that interaction with her and being like, Huh. You should have fought me. Like, that was kind of the end of the date. Because whenever, whenever we'd had that conversation, like, we yeah. were like, you... Ye Yellow Submarine has merits. I would like to see why you like it. It does suck. There's any other Beatles song. Yellow yep. Submarine? Come on. It's the worst <laughs> of the 30 number one hits. But yeah. It was a number one hit for a reason. I would have liked to have seen her defend it, but... She just was a yes woman. Yeah, and I didn't like it. No. Isn't that funny? It is funny. People, guys being like, what? <laughs> just fight me on it! <laughs> this, this bitch always fighting me. And then, like, if they don't fight you, then you're bored with them. <laughs> you know? You got You actually do have to have somebody who, yeah. at least for me, for me to be attracted to somebody, I have to believe that they're smarter than me. Yeah, the challenge deal on some yeah, stuff, like, or, or yeah, tries she, to. Yeah, yeah. And I honestly, I really do want that in my life. Somebody who's like, hey, hey, slow your roll. Yep. You know, stop taking shits and cat boxes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I need someone in my life to be like, don't do that. Donnie, maybe you should rethink what you're about to do. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? No. This is going to be hilarious. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure about that? All right. That's it. Week 22. We're in an hour and a half. You know, you know how these robots work. Right. They only let us go an hour and 20 minutes or they won't do the work for me. We are the husband. We are the husband now. We are, we are capped. Can't take no more.